Coming up, why you might be seeing more Mustangs on Eastern Kentucky roadways. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. A group of Mustangs have hit the mountains of Eastern Kentucky today, boosting the local economy and giving back to those in need in the process. WYMT's Jordan Mullins has more from Pikeville on the Mustangs at the Mines event. A group of nearly 80 Mustangs have come to the mountains this weekend in partnership with Red Mirror Events and Backroads of Appalachia for the Mustangs at the Mines event. Throughout the weekend, these cars will tour scenic routes throughout the area and learn a bit about the history of the hills. We stopped on the way back at a, one of the mines that's been shut down. We did a photo op there. Uh, people got to see the conveyors, you know, the silos and things, and, and a lot of people have never seen anything like that. So it gives them a, a good sense of the history of the area. Along the way, officials say groups such as these help out local tourism and the local economy. You know, they made a lodge in Pikeville, Pike County, but all week this week, they'll be eating two and three meals, shopping, discovery, uh, wineries, um, distilleries, gift shops, things that uh, bring economy into our area with a newfound dollar. And partnerships across county and state lines, as well as groups such as Backroads of Appalachia and Red Mirror Events, means a larger impact for the entire region. It's only way is partnership, because my message and my dollar only goes so far. You put that, that partnership together, you got a combine of a whole bow of people reaching out in many directions. But not just on the economy. On Thursday, these Mustangs hit the streets of Pikeville for a brief show. But on Friday, they plan to give back for flood relief. It just touched so many people that when you see these people losing family members and losing their homes or whatever, and then we're coming here to drive our cars around the roads where these people used to live. And so it really turned it into a, hey, we need to give these guys back what we can and help out. Giving back to folks in need and having a bit of fun while they're at it. In Pikeville, Jordan Mullins, WYMT Mountain News. Red Mirror events owner Stephen Spangler says he and Eric Hubbard with Backroads of Appalachia planned this event months before the flooding. But Spangler said he knew they needed to give back after he saw all the devastation. There will be a check presentation for flood relief and a cruise in with all the Mustangs at Kentucky Mist Distillery in Letcher County on Friday at 3 p.m. Governor Bashir gave an update on the flooding response during his Team Kentucky News Conference today. 32 service connections are still without water. That's down from more than 34,000 on July 28th. Kentucky State Parks are still housing more than 330 people. More than 400 people are in 149 travel trailers across seven state parks. More than 225,000 tons of debris has been removed. FEMA has approved more than $71 million in grants for 7,610 households. The Team Eastern Kentucky Flood Relief Fund has now raised more than $9.7 million. The death toll from the flood remains at 40, but two Breathitt County women are still missing. 60-year-old Vanessa Baker and 29-year-old Nancy Cundiff are both from the Lost Creek community. Governor Bashir said Kentucky Emergency Management and Kentucky State Police are continuing to search for the women. Anyone with information about the women's whereabouts are asked to contact KSP Post 13 in Hazard at 606-435-6069. Students have now returned to class in all of Kentucky's 171 districts. Among those resuming classes this week, Riverside Christian in Breathitt County. The school was heavily damaged for the second time in two years by the flood, and the staff says they have worked extremely hard to get the students back on campus. Principal Meg Asher says they hope to provide all the tools and resources for their students who may be struggling. We have a full-time counselor on staff right now um, who is going to be helping. Um, kids are allowed to just kind of walk in. Um, all of my staff are on board and ready to go and um, are kind of watching for the red flag trigger type things. There are still jobs that need to be completed around the school and Asher says they are working every day to continue fixing what they can. 
Well, we are officially in the fall season that started about two hours ago, and we are already looking at some fall like temperatures across the mountains. Here's a live look right now over at the London Corbin Airport. All is quiet right now. Current temperature is sitting at 58 degrees, and that will continue to fall through the overnight hours. Temperatures across the mountains in the middle 50s for most of us, 55 in Pikeville, 57 in Jackson, still sitting at 61 in Somerset, and 53 over in Manchester. Dew points, they fell from the 60s to the 40s, so that means the air is much drier tonight, and that dry air will continue into your Friday. Up on Pinpoint Doppler, all is quiet across the region tonight, and that quiet weather will continue, but it will be chilly. This is the chilliest air we've seen in quite some time, falling into the middle 40s as we wake up on Friday. But what can you expect for your Friday and the weekend? I have that full forecast coming up in just a little bit. Steve. All right, Cameron, thank you. A former Johnson Central High School coach is expected in court in November. A Johnson County Grand Jury indicted Darren Rice with first degree sexual abuse, third degree rape, and third degree sodomy. Rice, who recently resigned as the Johnson Central High School girls basketball coach, could face between three and 15 years in prison if convicted. Rice has been released on a $5,000 bond. He's scheduled to a appear in court on November 21st. A Boyd County man accused of shooting a police officer has pleaded guilty in a violent kidnapping. Jonathan Lee Smithers physically assaulted a victim he was in a romantic relationship with back in May. The victim was able to escape and hide. Law enforcement found her collapsed at a gas station. When officers approached Smithers, he shot one of them in the throat. The officer survived life-threatening injuries. Smithers is facing a sentence of life in prison. Governor Andy Beshear is addressing unemployment concerns. A system overhaul delay could push progress back four more years. We told you last week that efforts to revamp Kentucky's unemployment system had stalled. The state canceled its latest request for proposals after a potential vendor stopped responding during negotiations. Governor Bashir noted that the vendor went dark and some of its employees are facing criminal charges. While he says they have to start the process over, he also made it a point to call out former Governor Matt Bevan, saying he created some of the system's issues. It's the process we have to go through, and we don't have an option but to restart it. There are things we could have done better, uh, but this fault goes a lot further than this current administration. When I had people saying, why don't you have an office here or there that I can walk into? It's because Matt Bevan closed 30 of them. The budget for the office had also been cut. The governor says claims are being processed in a timely manner. The upgrade is expected to cost more than $47 million. The Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky announced today a million-dollar partnership with Team Kentucky. The new partnership will help the foundation and the state to, quote, educate and encourage Kentuckians to keep their guard up this flu and COVID season. The Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky has been collecting opinions from all across the state on their views about the pandemic. They say they've learned many people are living their personal lives like the pandemic is over, while others are still worried about it and the flu. Experts expect this winter will bring more COVID-19 cases and usher in a severe flu season. State health officials are encouraging Kentuckians to not only get the updated COVID booster vaccine, but to also get the flu shot. A toast to those who have fought cancer or are fighting it now. Cocktails for Cancer was held tonight at the art station in downtown Hazard as a fundraiser for cancer research and flood victims. WIMT sports anchor Courtney Lane Brewer organized the event. She was diagnosed with cancer in 2015 and fought it for two years before the scans were clear. Now Brewer says she's thinking about how much the support means after her battle with thyroid cancer. I think about like that girl who is 17 years old and had her, her what she wanted to be when she grew up taken away. Everything changed and I wish I could tell that little girl not only are you thriving, you're celebrating the thing that kicked you down but made you stronger. The money raised will be split between the Thyroid Cancer Survivors Association and Appalachia Rises 
for flood relief. High school students had the chance to dive into medical careers at Hazard Community and Technical College today. They could pick three of seven sessions to attend. Some sessions included dentistry, physical therapy, and pharmacy. Those we talked with said this was a great way for students to decide what they want to do after high school, and they say students should not be afraid to find a career they love. Pick up a telephone or knock on some doors and knock on uh, dental doors, knock on physical therapy doors and say, I'm interested in this. I would like to shadow you and see exactly what you do. More than 60 students from four Eastern Kentucky high schools attended. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, we'll take a look at the latest from Russia and Ukraine. And a quiet night is on tap across the mountains, but it will be pretty chilly. You have your latest forecast coming up.